Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see the zero three five possessive mass. We already know what this is, but let's see the SCP explain infographics version of it. Let's go. Let's see what it's talking about. Let's see what it's talking about. Let's see what it's talking about. The SCP Foundation does their best to live up to their famous namesake. They secure and contain anomalies and monsters from all around the world, or sometimes even off-world, and protect yeah, the public where from is the my dangers super that suit? strange entities might pose. However, despite their efforts to maintain security and keep their subjects under lock and key, there are sometimes creatures so clever, so devious, and so determined to escape their captivity and wreak havoc on the world, that even the SCP Foundation struggles to keep them from getting free. One example is SCP-035, or the Possessive Mask. SCP-035 is one of the most dangerous test subjects in SCP Foundation custody, and its mere presence at the Foundation has resulted in untold damage, death, and destruction. It seems innocent enough to the untrained eye. The mask, which resembles a classic white porcelain comedy mask, though it occasionally changes its expression to tragedy, has been in existence since at least the 1800s. In the late 19th century, the Foundation discovered the mask in a sealed crypt beneath an abandoned home in Venice. It is unknown how it got there, or how the Foundation knew Hold to- on, let me, uh, switch my, uh... Let me, uh, appreciate the follow. Let me, pre let me change my, uh... Uh, name... Or the title. Let's go. For it. If there was ever an explanation for its discovery, it has long since been removed or redacted from the Foundation's archives. You're probably wondering, how can a simple mask leave multiple seasoned Foundation employees dead? Well, like everything at the SCP Foundation, this mask is not what it seems. There is a reason its classification is Keter, a designation that refers to an entity that's excessively difficult to contain, and it couples this difficulty with a pronounced hostility towards human life, and the ability to cause widespread destruction in the event of a containment breach. These are the qualities that the poor unfortunate souls assigned to guard SCP-035 would come to understand all too well. The possessive mask is a parasitic entity, constantly seeking out a host willing to put it on. Any human being in the mask's proximity experiences a sudden, unexplainable urge to put it on, and once they do, there's no going back. SCP Foundation research has determined that once a host has put on the mask, their brain waves are replaced with an alternative pattern, this one coming from the mask, rendering the host effectively brain dead. Bro. Once the host's brain function has been eliminated, <laughs> the mask takes over, Bro, what is piloting that? their body and even speaking through them. However, the mask can only Yo, that's that. That's over. the one bull who became a janitor. That's the same bull. I forgot his name from uh, the last uh, infographics uh, SCP. I can tell because he don't got a V-neck. He got a circle neck faces. Piloting their body and even speaking through them. However, the mask can only occupy a host for a small amount of time before the body begins to decay and decompose, eventually rotting away completely, leaving nothing but desiccated flesh and bones where there once was a person. SCP-035 is capable of possessing any humanoid being, whether that's an actual human being or a lifeless humanoid shape. Despite all their research, the SCP Foundation unknowingly gave the mask all the tools and resources it needed to break containment and leave a trail of bodies in its wake. For a time, the mask was given host privileges, meaning that it was purposely allowed to occupy a host in order to speak with the scientists studying it. In order to avoid murky ethical issues, the host was usually something inanimate like a mannequin or a statue. These conditions, however unsettling, allowed the researchers to carry out interviews with the consciousness housed inside the mask, in the hope of beginning to understand it and its motivations. However, SCP-035 lost all access to its host privileges after it almost pulled off an unprecedented, shocking, and nearly catastrophic escape attempt. In its early days at the facility, when it was still allowed host privileges, it was contained in a triple locked room and monitored by several research wow. personnel. These were experienced researchers who had been with the Foundation for a minimum of five years. Yeah, I've already, I watched the rubber's version of this video, but I want to see the other, I want to see what infographics has to say about it and also their animation style of it. Each, an unusually long tenure in such a dangerous and mentally corrosive line of work. These research staff members were thought to be the most capable of handling interactions with the mask and be able to resist its attempts at manipulation. Unfortunately, these assumptions were naive. 
and seriously underestimated the mask's power. Research on the mask indicates that the mask is incredibly intelligent and a skilled manipulator. It has a photographic memory, intelligence that would rank it in the 99th percentile of humans, and the ability to incite dramatic changes in the behavior and people that it talks to. One particularly infamous interview between the entity and an unnamed doctor at the Foundation suggested that the mask may even possess telepathic abilities. The mask was able to give details about the doctor's life that no one else was privy to, including knowledge of an affair that his wife was having. Following the interview, the doctor suffered a psychotic break and committed suicide just 24 hours later. The mask is able to use its superior intelligence, charismatic personality, and mind-reading abilities to get inside the heads of those it speaks with. It will pull out any and all psychological stops to get what it wants, leaving broken minds and spirits in its wake. It was really only a matter of time before it used this skill set to its advantage and attempted to escape its confinement. The day of the escape attempt was like any other. The research staff, a team of three intelligent, experienced men, checked into the facility, measured the conditions of the mask's containment unit, and began the process of interviewing the mask like normal. Its motions were slow and looked to require great effort, as its current host was beginning to degrade beyond use. The mask was attached to the blank face of a mannequin, and corrosive black liquid could be seen oozing from its eye and mouth holes. This liquid is excreted by the mask at a near-constant rate, and it's thought to be at least partially responsible for the accelerated decay of the host bodies. In spite of the entity's unsettling, nightmarish appearance, it was just another day's work for the men assigned to monitor SCP-035. And so they carried on with their daily routine. Everything was going according to plan until one of the men, Dr. Jones, began to behave erratically. He demanded that his fellow scientists leave him alone with the mask for a while. My man looked like a scrotum, duh and allow him to engage in a private conversation with it. It is unknown what exactly the two spoke about while the other two scientists were absent, as the security footage mm. captured had no sound. However, several minutes into the conversation and the footage, Dr. Jones can be seen dissolving into a fit of tears, laying on the ground and shaking with sobs as the mask dispassionately watches. He then climbs onto his knees, begging the mask for something, before he embraces it. He holds the mannequin in his arms for five straight minutes, weeping again before they separate. After this disturbing emotional display, Dr. Jones brought the other scientists back into the room with him. What happened next is still uncertain, but there are a few things that we know for sure. The other scientists began to speak with the mask. In later interviews, the other scientists were bordering on incoherent babbling about various traumas from their lives. One repeatedly referred to a drunk driving accident where a dear friend was killed and he was at fault. Another simply cried out for his mother again and again. Whatever the mask said to them, it was enough to completely destroy their mental health. After the two scientists had been emotionally devastated by the mask, Dr. Jones escalated the situation further. Dr. Jones removed the mask from the decaying mannequin body, and shocking everyone who had later reviewed the security footage, placed it onto his own Oh face. nah, bro. Oh no. Nah. Once the mask was in place, the security footage ends. At the command of the mask, which was now speaking through Dr. Jones, the other two men switched off all security camera monitoring oh. SCP-035's containment facility. The mask, piloting the body of Dr. Jones like a horrible fleshy puppet, made its way through the facility, avoiding detection until it reached the exit doors, where it was finally stopped by a team of over a dozen security guards. Knowing the dangers of touching the mask, all Foundation employees involved in the recontainment of SCP-035 refused to remove it from Dr. Jones' face. Instead, he was placed in the lock room with the mask still on, left alone to be observed over the security cameras until his body had decomposed beyond use. His body paced back and forth in the cell for days, flesh rotting and dropping away only until sinew and bone remained. Only when the bones began to turn black and brittle, crumbling apart into dust, did the body finally stop moving. His family was notified, the mask was carefully removed from what was left of his body, and his remains were destroyed. The other two scientists involved in the SCP-035 escape attempt were terminated, and their files destroyed. After this incident, a few more failed escape attempts, and the acknowledgement of the devastation that could have been caused if the mask had made its way out into the general population, SCP-035 lost its host privileges altogether. Several research staff protested this decision, insisting that there was more to be learned from speaking with the entity. 
and citing valuable information that it had given about other SCPs. However, the risk was determined to considerably outweigh the potential reward, and the request to reinstate 035's host privileges were denied. Good. Several staff members went so far as to erupt into violent outbursts on 035's behalf, attacking their supervisors who refused to provide the mask with a new host, clawing at them with animalistic rage. Any staff members that submitted a request to reinstate said privileges were considered a security threat and reassigned to a different SCP, or in some cases, terminated. Any staff member who had direct contact with SCP-035 was also terminated, in order to avoid the risk of any more staff-aided escape attempts. The mask is now kept in a hermetically sealed glass case, and there is a psychologist on call to provide assistance to anyone guarding it in case of adverse effects on their mental health from the mask's presence. Personnel that work around the mask, even in its current dormant state, experience frequent violent outbursts and a higher rate of suicide. Even without a host, the mask's corrosive effects have spread across its containment facility. The walls of the room have begun to secrete the same black liquid that emanates from the mask, which tests have revealed to be highly contaminated human blood that damages the structural integrity of the walls following prolonged contact. This blood has begun to form patterns on the walls, spelling out words and phrases in Italian, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit, as well as depicting drawings of ritual sacrifice and mutilation. Staff members also report hearing unintelligible whispering and horrifying high-pitched laughter when in proximity to the mask. Further exposure to the mask results in migraines, hemorrhaging around the eyes, mouth, and nose, and an eventual psychotic brain. Between the corrosive substance appearing on the walls and the physical and psychological damage to employees, SCP-035 is becoming increasingly difficult to contain, and there are debates among staff as to whether the entity can, in fact, be contained at all. As soon as possible, SCP-035 will be moved into a new containment uh -huh. facility, and its previous cell will be isolated from the rest of the Foundation's property and destroyed for the safety of all involved. We can only hope that the new containment procedures are more effective than the last ones, and that this mask never makes its way into the world again. If it does, who knows how many lives it will claim. In the meantime, if you ever come across a strange mask and feel a nearly uncontrollable urge to put it on, ignore the whispered pleas to just try it. Ignore the echoing laughter and the sensation of something older and more powerful than you can imagine rummaging through your deepest, darkest secret thoughts. Turn around and run as fast as you can in the other direction. You'll be glad that you did. Damn, that shit was crazy. That shit was serious. Even though we already know all the stuff that happens was 035, we also know the containment procedure that actually worked with the other SCP so that it didn't, so that the walls wouldn't uh, break anymore and how they clean it out and stuff like that. That's, that's just crazy, you know?